We're starting this week's episode of the MT and Me with a little quiz. I would like for you to watch the following video clips and see if you can notice some common factor among all of them. Now this other case is an old clothes dryer that I saved the case on just in case I needed some sheet metal. It looks like eyes wide open, ready to go. Hit the road. We decided this side window on the over cab was also doing okay. So, did you notice anything? Uh, here's a hint. <laughs> What's the deal with the yard? <laughs> and here's another hint. Yeah, lots of leaves, dry leaves, noisy leaves, leaves that are definitely in the red when it comes to background sound. And today we're going to do something about them. I hope. So I pull back the curtain on my front door and there's something on my porch. So after all this time, I don't have to tell you how I love finding things on my front porch. <laughs> Especially when it's something I bought for me. And that's exactly what this is. This is going to help me solve that little audio problem on some of the MT and Me videos. The crunching leaves as I walk around because sometimes the leaves are louder than me talking. And uh, hey, can't have that. Gotta have good sound when you're on YouTube. It's law. So anyway, this is going to help me clean up the mess. And <laughs> frankly, I hope it's not too little too late. I mean, we're way past autumn. We're actually in the middle of winter time, and we're probably, hopefully, past the worst winter weather here in the Mid-South. It still gets kind of cold a little bit occasionally, but probably nothing nasty anymore. Father Oak has lost all the leaves he's going to lose this year. They're all on the ground. They've been on the ground since autumn. So it's about time I started cleaning them up. As a matter of fact, I actually have some green grass starting to shoot up through my bed of leaves. So I need to get the leaves cleared away so the grass can grow back. Which means, of course, I'll be mowing grass before you know it. Blowing leaves, mowing grass, it just never ends, does it? Oh well, let's get into the box, get it put together, and see what we can do. So, I didn't just buy a leaf blower. I bought what is basically a hurricane in a box. Air speed up to 140 miles an hour. It moves up to 725 cubic feet per minute of air volume. <laughs> um, so yeah, it should handle just about any pile of leaf that uh, I can get in the yard and would Grandfather Oak here above me, he's loaded with a bunch of leaves. And they're nice big leaves. So I think we're going to do just fine. Let's get this box open and see what we have. I, uh, I don't really know if I'm going to need any tools for this or not. That being the assembly of it, I mean. 
This is not a cordless unit. I looked at those and uh, decided that I'd be better off getting something electric and corded. So you can see right from the start, you have to plug this one in. I assure you it does come out of the box. Oh, you just have to take the proper part out first. And that would be this. <laughs> oh, I like it already. And this would be yeah, the cowling snaps on. <laughs> Apparently, with that one little bit of assembly, we're ready to plug in and blow. But before we start, Reed will be all over me if I don't at least look at the instructions, okay? For the Powerjet F700 blower, or the Soplador F700, if you happen to be south of the border, or if you're around the world en français, it's the Souffleur power jet. How nice. Uh, okay, so I'm looking at the instructions here. The English ones. Oh, look. Well, it's nice to know that I assembled it properly. That was kind of intuitive. Everything else basically says, yeah, there's only like two pages of English and then the other languages. Basically, it says, plug it in, turn it on, and blow. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we plug it in. It has a built-in strain release on it, so that it doesn't unplug while you're using it. That's always handy. One of the reasons I bought this is it has a constantly variable speed. A lot of these things you buy just have maybe one speed or maybe they have two, low and high. This one is supposed to have a variable speed. Well, it works. <laughs> Look out, leaves. Wow, that's like a one minute pass <laughs> next to Pearl here. My goodness, this thing is powerful. Oh, and that was on low speed too, I should mention. And these leaves are pretty wet. I don't know if you can tell, but the ground down here is quite wet. So it was moving them good. Now there's obviously a bit of a learning curve. Some places you just can't quite blow out, so you're still gonna have to sweep some and do a little touch up. But that's, that's okay, I don't mind. It gets the bulk of the leaves. I'll be able to blow them into a pile. That's marvelous. I'm happy 
and you know you start blowing leaves around and you never know what you'll find this was buried under my leaves it's the uh one of the carburetor gaskets i i thought i'd had two of them and i still had one which was all i needed fortunately but it's nice to know that i do have the spare it's it's a little damp it's been under wet leaves for two or three months but hey at least i have it it'll dry out and if i ever need it we got it and we got something to solve the crunchy leaf problem around pearl but i think i need to let these leaves dry we should have a couple of days ahead without any rain and uh i'll let them dry a little bit more get back out here with this brand new toro blower which by the way i bought this thing this is not a commercial endorsement but so far if they asked me to do one i'd be happy to hint hint nudge nudge wink wink uh so anyway we'll be blowing some leaves around and maybe have slightly quieter videos as far as background crunching goes here on the mt and me yeah but while we're waiting for the leaves to dry there's always other things we can be doing because i don't know it seems like the pearl project is never quite finished all kinds of little jobs for instance in this box i have a brand new voltage regulator it's going to be a simple task to take the old one off and put this one on. I mean, literally just a couple of minutes of work. And so we're gonna take care of that today too. But first of all, I'm gonna show you why I'm changing it. This is Pearl's voltage regulator, right here. Now, as you can see, it's just attached to the firewall with a couple of bolts and it has a simple Two wire plug that fastens into it this plug actually has a little lock knock things out of the way a little locking mechanism here to hold it in place and we'll take that out in a minute right below you can see why I'm replacing this you see this black tar substance it's still sticky uh, that's uh, probably a PCB content which means I really shouldn't be touching it with my bare skin. Uh, it means that this, either this regulator or the one prior to it, I don't know if it's been changed or not, okay? But a voltage regulator has gotten too hot and has melted down, had a meltdown, and the residue is still on the firewall. I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually still dripped down on the... Uh, corner of this is the the air conditioner compressor right here and it's dripped down all over that it's all down on there's a big blob of it down here that you can't even see on the camera uh but obviously yeah one of them had a a, a major meltdown and that's the reason i'm going to go ahead and replace this unit i don't know if this is a replacement or if this one had the meltdown in which case it probably is either bad or on its way to being bad. So, it's about a $13 part. So, let's change it, get it taken care of, and that way we don't have to worry about it. I'll take the new one and show you what this substance is that's all melted down. If we look in the box... It's another box opening. Ha <laughs> ha. Not real dramatic, but hey, this is what's in there, okay? See? It's an exact replacement. Looks just like it, except it's a different color. It doesn't say Borg Warner on it. Otherwise. But if you look at the back, you see this shiny plastic looking part? That's that heat substance that you see melted all over the firewall. So this little booger got hot enough that this surface melted and ran down on the firewall. Um, that ain't supposed to happen. That means there was a serious electric issue. So I'm hoping that there's still not a serious electric issue going on here. 
I'm going to replace the part and in the very near future we're going to be putting a battery in and putting the key on accessory and energizing all this stuff and then maybe we'll see if there is indeed a problem but for today we're going to disconnect this little two prong well it's a two it's it's actually made for three prongs but there's only two of them in there go figure probably another model has uh, three but this one's only got two we'll disconnect that get the old one off put the new one on plug it in and this job will be done those may be famous last words remember them because you know how my jobs on pearl tend to go let's do this All right, I'm going to try to keep this where you can see what I'm doing. You probably can't see me and what I'm doing at the same time, but this is really more important. Remember the other day, I think it was in last week's video, I, I made the remark that I used a 10-millimeter uh, socket because it looked like it would work, and it did, because everything's either 10 or 11 millimeters. These bolts... They're 11 millimeters. <laughs> See, I don't make this stuff up. I really do try to research it a little bit. Okay? So anyway, before we take them out, let's get this little plug off. Now, this is interesting because you have to squeeze in on the sides and pull it out. It has uh, this little metal frame that locks in on uh, these two pieces right here so it holds it in place pretty ingenious really okay 11 millimeter socket going to work Remember I said it had that sticky tar substance? Well, it fell off, and obviously, this is the one that has melted down. So I think I made a pretty good choice in uh, replacing it. Now the problem here is what made it melt down? Well... We'll find that out later on. Because if the same thing happens to this one, well, we'll know we have an issue. But for the time being, I think, while I've got that off, I'm going to see if I can get a putty knife and maybe scrape some of that off of there. Get it cleaned up a little bit. So my putty knife is huge. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm gonna get, eh, maybe we can get some of it off. You may notice here, around both bolts, they've gone through and they scraped the paint off the firewall. That's because this case needs to ground to the, uh, the body of the, uh, the vehicle in order for it to function. I actually think I'm going to try to uh, get something and do a little more scraping there just to be sure I've got a good ground. Okay, I think that'll be suitable for it.
And last but certainly not least, let's see if we can get this connector back on it. That's that. I have to admit, I was really hoping I would take this old one off and it would be just fine. Because that would have meant that all that uh, PCB residue had come out of a previous regulator that had a problem and they had already replaced it. Well, that's obviously not the case. This is the one that had the problem. Now, it could be something in the regulator itself, or it could be the sign of uh, a larger scale electrical problem. Only further checking and time will tell. Uh, I can only be very, very thankful that I trusted my gut instinct and went ahead and ordered a replacement for this, just really without knowing that it was bad, actually hoping that it wasn't. But it is, and so it's a good thing we have a new one. Uh, I feel now like I really need to go ahead and order another ignition module, uh, maybe get a ballast resistor. I mean, these things look okay, but looks can be deceiving. They don't have any evident uh, failing like this one did, where it got hot and melted down. They're not showing anything like that. And I can actually check the ballast resistor. I can take an ohmmeter and see if it's good or not. Uh, so I can check that one out. But there again, it's, it's an $8 part. Now, don't get me wrong. Five, eight, ten, twenty dollar $20 parts, they add up real quick. And before you know it, you've spent several hundred bucks on little components that may or may not need replacing. So I don't want to spend any more money than I have to. But I don't want to be chintzy either, and I don't want to run the risk of having something fail on me when I could have prevented it for 15 bucks, you know. So, anyway, we have a new voltage regulator. The latest new part in Pearl's restoration. All right, my nomies. So, brand new voltage regulator on Pearl. That's a good thing. But as for the leaves, which is where we started at on this video, I may have spoken a little too soon about the weather. You may remember I mentioned we're going to wait a few days, let it dry out, and then we'll get out there and blow the leaves up and burn them. Well, it's raining again. That's why we're indoors here to uh, wrap up the video. Uh, so it may be a little bit longer on the leaf job, but we will get them blown up and then we will have one heck of a bonfire in the near future. And I promise you, I'll share it with you here on the MT and me. As for next week, I think we're going to focus on the starter because we need to get it back on Pearl so that whenever we do get the battery in in the next few weeks, we can maybe bump her over a little bit just to see. So we're going to check the starter, first of all, to be sure it's still good. We can do that with just a battery and some jumper cables. Uh, all we want to know is be sure the motor turns in it and runs steady and be sure the Bendix kicks out and stays in place so the solenoid is working good. We'll check those two things. If the starter is good, if it checks out, we'll put it back on Pearl and we'll have her ready to turn over. Not run, but just turn over, just to see how things are going to spin, all right? Uh, so let's hope that all works out. And if there's a problem with the starter, this is where we'll find it, and we can address that and take care of it before we go any further with the electrical restoration. So, all that's next week. I want to thank you for being part of it this week, though. If you have not subscribed to the MT and Me, please do so. We're at around 144. I'd love to hit 150 and keep going. 
on the subscriber list. So help me do that. If you haven't subscribed already, click subscribe and uh, watch us every week here on YouTube. Okay, there are also links below to uh, buy me a coffee or to help out with the project a little bit. A uh, link to our Facebook page, the Facebook address, and also a link to themtandme.com where you'll find all kinds of great information. Okay, so check those out. Check us out every Sunday right here. Same time, same channel, and same old me working on Pearl. Till next time around, thank you, my nomies. I love you. Thanks for watching and supporting us. I'm Russ, and of course, we will talk later.